we're gonna go to page uh, I think 293 293 um, let me just open my document if I go to so yeah so we're going to Mount Muni Winnie book um, for those who are listening it's trade like a stock market visit that's the book and I'm just going to bring up my book here for a second. Um, notes, actually. Um, just want to make sure. Let me see here. Where did I put it? Oh, actually, I don't remember where I put it. Okay. So we'll just recap quickly um, what we talked about last time. Yeah, so we kind of talk about risk management and mm -hmm. it requires discipline. And then we, we start talking about contingency planning and we just kind of, um, so on page 293 of that book, that's where it start talking about contingency planning. And uh, you basically want to handle each position based on whatever could potentially unfold that day. Um, so that so then he start listing in his book uh, four basic contingency plans. So on page two ninety five, he starts talking about the initial stop loss. Right. So right away you want to establish a man's, uh, a maximum stop loss. The price at which you will exit exit the position if it moves against me, right? Um, the moment the price hit the stop loss, I sell the position without hesitation, right? So so that's very important. Uh, so you know, um, so and then it, it, the next line is also important. Once you are out of the stop, I can evaluate the sit situation with a clear head. So, you know, that's, that's kind of, you know, a mentality that I'm trying to, you know, be very good at is because, you know, when you're in the position, you, 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 you contemplate a lot. Uh, but when you're out, you can look at it with a clear mind, right? Um, so that's very important. And then the last sentence in that paragraph, once the stock events, the sell point should be raised to protect your profit with the use of a trailing stop or backstop. Um, so that's up to you know anyone. Like for me, I do it manually. Um, you know, um, so so that's the initial stop loss. Any question about that initial stop loss? Uh, for the re-entry, that's the next section. Second paragraph, you shouldn't assume that a stock will reset if it moves against you. You should always protect yourself and cut your loss. And then the sentence after, um, if the stock still has all the characteristics of a potential winner, look for a re-entry point. Your timing may be off. It could take two or even three tries to catch a big winner. So, and then the high both highlight bold sentence amateurs are scale positions that stop them out once or twice professionals are objective and dispassionate and then on the next page some of my best trades were in stocks that previously stopped me out several times and then reset right so this whole section the re-entry point is all about like you know once you're out you can Think about how to get back in if it's if it's a good stock, right? Um, sometimes it takes two or three times, like you said. Um, and then now, so the stock has you in the position, you have a stop loss set up. So now you're talking about selling at a profit. And again, it's, this this section is all about conditionally planning. So I think uh, I highlight here at the bottom of the first paragraph. 
you may feel foolish breaking even on a position that was previously a decent gain. However, you will feel even worse if you let a nice gain turn into a loss. Right? So at some point, you have to close out the trade. There are two ways you can sell. You can sell into strength, which means cashing out shares while the share price is rising. Right? Or you can sell into weakness, which means selling while the share price is declining. Selling into strength is a learned practice of professional traders. It's important to recognize when the stock is running up rapidly and may be exhausting itself. You can unload your position easily when buyers are plentiful, or you can sell into the first signs of weakness immediately after such a price is broken down. You need to have a plan for both selling into strength and selling into weakness. Market data connection loss. So that, that whole section is about um, selling, you know, trying to take your profit, basically. Um, so, and then he talks about, you know, you can't let a profit turn into a loss. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure we all have done that many times. Um, yeah. Any, any question about that? No, sounds good. Yeah. Uh, so you usually do uh, sell into strength rather than weakness, right? For me, I usually sell into weakness. Um, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, so there's there's balance there, right? So it's, let's say the stock run three days, you can start selling into strength, or you can let it run because you don't know how many days it will run. It could run for another five days. You know, you could up to ten days even. So you really don't know, right? Um, so if you sell, let's say, let's say you know, I don't know. Again, it, it really depends. Um, how you want to manage. It's just like managing risk. You want to manage how to take profit on the on the profit side. So you kind of ask yourself, right? What 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 is your goal? Um, you know. Um, so it de also depends on like the market conditions too, right? So so like Mark Minowini talk about, you know, depending on the conditions of the market, you may even start to take profit between five and ten percent, right? Just because sometimes the conditions are so bad, like in the bear market, that it just wouldn't go far enough. Um, uh, or or stocks will you know be very choppy. You know they might rise five to ten percent come back down to almost near the buy point and then go up again another five to ten so it's kind of, kind of like back and forth um condition so so it, you have to kind of look at each stock individually and then also look at the market condition that's how i kind of assess it um but generally it's very really hard to sell into strength usually when you sell into strength it's usually pretty obvious like that's when I would sell into strength. Like say you have a one day, so let's say it's been running three, four days up, and then all of a sudden you have this one day that up, you know, and I'm talking about after it breaks out, right? And it's it all of a sudden up five percent that day or seven percent or even more, like even double digit Um so that those kinds of days I would generally want to sell something to take the profit. So that's like selling to strength. Um so so depending, you know. What, what your trading strategy is, right? Uh, whether it's really short term or whether it's more uh, intermediary term, like, you know, more than a month kind of holding um, or whether it's just like a few days or a week kind of holding. Um, so, but generally, if you see a stock rise really fast, I would definitely take some profit. That's kind of a general rule of thumb for me. Does that make sense? So 90% of the time I'm, I'm using the stop loss rule. So winning, like I'll raise my stops, right? Um, so that's kind of like selling into weakness because I usually set my stops at the lows of each day. Um, so if we get retested, I'll get stopped out. Does that make sense? So that's kind of selling, you know, into weakness. Um, the only problem with that strategy is that if it's very choppy, you will get stopped out a lot, right? So so again, that depends on the stock 
itself as well, how often it retests its, its low. Um, and every stock eventually retests the low. So it's not, it's just a matter of timing, right? Where does it retest the low? Does that make sense? Um, so I think we'll continue on next time, but I think, okay, we'll, yeah, I think we'll continue on next time. But that's the four things he mentioned. Oh no, and then the last thing was the disaster plan, which is um, this this section, the highlight sentence here, the important condition, contingency planning plays that is that it enables you to make good decisions when you're under fire, when you need it the most. Um, to survive in the stock market over the long term, I run my portfolio as if something really bad was gonna happen every day. I was prepared for the worst case scenario, right? So that's very interesting because we don't think that way as human nature. Every day we think, you know, for the best scenario that day, right? Um, you know, how much we can make that day. Kind of, that's how we, we wake up and that's how we approach the market, yeah. right? So, so you know, this is very important. It's like you kind of want to think of the worst case scenario. And, and for example, Friday was a very good scenario of that, right? You wake up and the market was down, right? And you wake up when the Nasdaq was down almost 2% in the futures. And so, you know, you have to prepare your mindset. Like, what do you do? What, you know, did you expect that? Did you even think it could possibly happen? Uh, stuff like that. And then you kind of have to assess how you want to position for that day, right? And how you want to readjust your, your portfolio as well. So those are very important things to think about every day. Um, of course, Friday was the jobs number. And we know it was going to move the market, right? Uh, one way or the other. So, so that's kind of, you know, so especially on those days when you know something will impact the market, those are the days you have to prepare your mind for uh, how you trade that day and how you adjust your portfolio. Um, and just to finish the last sentence here, um, in, in the last paragraph, you're never going to have all the answers, but you can cover most of the bases to the point where you your reward outweighs your risk, and that's the key. So this sentence I feel like quite important um, because when you enter a trade, you should always ask yourself, what is your risk and what is your reward? Because, and, and for Mark Minuini, he always thinks like a, at least a three to one ratio. So if you're willing to list, risk 3% of your money, and, and then your gain should be roughly 9 to 10 percent, right? That's kind of the, the idea he has. So depending on the market, uh, if you risk 5 percent, you're hoping you, can, you should hope for 15 percent. And if you risk 7 percent, you should be hoping for 20 to 25 percent. So again, you have to enter the trade with that thinking, right? What is you know your goal and what is the market condition? Like you have to assess everything at once and kind of make sure are you staying with that um strategy right uh with that mindset that you you enter the trade um because what happened is that and, and, and you know we all do it is that you enter a trade you have a strategy in place this is your goal this is your risk you identify all that and then something happened and then you, all of a sudden you're like oh you know like for example friday morning even if it didn't hit your risk level you might have sell out for example, I'm just using that example. But what happened to the market? It, it, it went back up, right? So um, now it's a different scenario if your stops or whatever your level you want to get out, got hit and you decide to sell or whether it automatically sell, that's fine. But don't, you know, don't let emotions get in your, your way of your strategy, right? Like it happens all the time. We all do it. We all panic because something happened, uh, things like that, right? So you have to stick with your plan and and over time hopefully you know you then assess your strategies right did that you know work for you over time but don't go change it up right in the middle of it you know like that's very important um does that make sense so so that's i think that's that, whole psychology game yeah yeah it's very psychological um and and you know so so I'll, I'll share with you what happened on Friday morning for me. Um, I look at my portfolio, and I was quite invested. And I look at my portfolio, and I look at all the pre-market um, um, 
you know, the price, right? And I look at all the group mm-hmm. stocks that I have in my portfolio, and you know, as you know, I'm quite diversified. So I can see, I say, how you know, with the market dropping easily one to two percent in the future, um, depending on which index you look at, and then I look at the stocks, how are they doing, right? And um, and most of them are negative for sure, right? Most of them, but then I saw some greens, um, maybe maybe twenty percent of them are green, which is kind of interesting and then i look at the ones that are down which is 80 percent of them which are red and i look at them they weren't like panic red you know it wasn't like two three percent across the board which i was expecting uh most of them are down like less than one percent um there's a few that down you know two three or even four percent but it wasn't like you know i i was i was thinking it would be more negative right like so so um so what i did was i make sure uh, my stops i give it a little bit more room um so so some of the stops that i've tightened the night before uh i actually loosen it so that it doesn't hit those stops right so i I'm really take a little bit give it a little bit of room and and then when i watch the futures after the news came out on the jobs report it think like i say the futures pretty much dropped to like for nasdaq anyway it dropped to two percent quite quickly and then i think for Dow it dropped to one percent very quickly, but as soon as it hit those levels, it kind of stopped. Normally, I expect it to keep going down and down and down. Like as soon as the market opened, it might even drop more. Um, and it didn't, right? It's, even after the market opened, it, it kind of bounced pretty quick actually. Um, so so those are little things I I, I focus on uh at times like that, right? Uh, but again, you have to kind of assess it at real time, and which is the hard thing to do, right? Um, so, um, and also like we'll look at the chart in a second, but the other thing that happened was, um, Thursday, sorry, Wednesday, we have that big update because of what Fed says Thursday, it was a really tight day. Like the range was really small on all the indexes. So I knew right away that after this news came out on Friday morning, it's going to give back some. The question is how much is it going to give back? And so um, so that's where you have to think about where your stops are, right? And because Wednesday is such a big day, um, you have to look at each stock individually and say, did it follow that pattern? And that's the theme I think I want to focus on today is um, uh, coming back to, you know, like I'm just going to open that chart that we were looking at last week. I think this is a very important thing to follow. Um, can you see my screen? Uh, right now I see you. You don't see my screen? Okay, let me uh, share my screen. Sorry. Oh, I'm I'm just seeing you. Yeah, I didn't share my screen. That's why. Sorry, I totally forgot to share my screen. Uh, that's okay. Okay, so can you see my screen now? Yes, I can. I see. All right. So here's here's the the the, the um, short term pattern, right? And we talk about an uptrend, and so um, this uptrend started on October 13. Okay. So we haven't really I haven't drawn here before November 9. But the pattern here is that we're gonna see uh, you know short term momentum, and so you know. Um, so um, the last top was November 23rd, around that time. And then we have a, a what do you call it? Thanksgiving uh, in the US. And then, yeah, and then, and then it start to drop um, quite hard for two days or three days, depending which index you look at. And then November 29th was the day, um, actually November 30th was the day it bounced, right? And November 29th was the low. Um, so the year was the day Wednesday was the day that uh, Fed announced that um, basically the language has changed a little bit the tone. So a lot of people didn't think anything has changed, mm-hmm. but the tone has changed. And um, uh, so yeah, so November third year we have that bounce. So right now we kind of in the uptrend again. Um, so we'll see 
right? So I'm going to jump to NASDAQ now. So, so NASDAQ, you know, is still way below the 200 day, but the patterns are the same for all the index. So if I go to S&P, that's probably the most important one right now, right? And so what happened this week? We have this big day, like, so we have two days of pullback, which was really strong, right? Like Monday, that's Monday was, you know, I text you in the morning, I say, you know, um, yeah, a lot of my stops got hit because I, I tightened it quite a bit and it, it, it got hit on that day. Tuesday, it kind of went down more. Um, but Tuesday, what happened was, it's probably hard for you to see, but Tuesday, it actually, you know, didn't close at the bottom. Uh, I'm just trying to see if it doesn't say the close range here, but but on the chart, you kind of can tell it kind of closed. Yeah, I can see. Mm -hmm. Close more at the top. If I go to mm -hmm. down, I just want to go to down and see if that happened as well. I believe so. Uh, yeah, Tuesday was up for down. Right, and close all the way to the top, and what happened was, um, I'm gonna jump to uh this report. It's a new report on this two here, and it's a three day report. Um, and let me just quickly pull this up, and I just want to show you this is in, I, I I want to study this um over time and see if it means anything, uh, but. It'll just take a second to load. But basically, the three-day report is based on three-day, right? And so whether it's an uptrend or a downtrend. Um, and the idea is if you look at one stock or two stocks, it doesn't mean much. But if you look at the whole set, like all the stocks, how many of them are kind of, you know, it's very important to look at the turn. That's kind of what this report is kind of trying to do. Uh, figure out is there a turn coming so if it's on a downtrend is it possible that it will turn soon uh or you know and this is we're talking about three days so it's really short term um so when you look at one or two stock it's hard to think of it as a a, a, a turning decision whereas if you're looking at a lot of the stocks um it could provide some insight you know, so for example, like what I'm trying to say is Tuesday um, was actually uh, not a bad day for a lot of stocks. And I think, I know it's taking a long time. I don't know why, but um, uh, maybe I have to restart this thing. Um, but what happens is that there's about 30 something percent. I think it was, I think it was close to 35% of the stocks. Okay, so here it show up. Um, so November 29th, there you go, 35% of the stocks I'm monitoring here, right? 105 stocks, I think the total is, uh, where is the total? Uh, 303 stocks here. 105 out of 303, 35% of them is actually on a, either a solid triangle or a, a white triangle, which both indicates it's, it may be turning, right? And so that's pretty good, Signif like it's significant, because if you look at the previous days, it's pretty low. And you can see the down days, the down uh, trend was pretty high, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what happened. Uh, so there was a, like I said, it could be a potential turn. And then we all know what happened on Wednesday. It, it bounced, you know, pretty strong, right? So, so again, I'm looking for this turn, right? So we have three down days uh, based on this, this, this report. We have three down days, uh, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, and then... Here we saw this jump in reversal, right? And so I, I was, you know, so Wednesday, what happened was uh, Fed speak around noon, but in the morning, I was still hesitant to buy in. But as the day progressed in the morning, I realized a lot of the stocks continue, like at least the 35% the of that I'm monitoring here, those stocks are still moving upward in the morning, which is, and they're hitting new highs again, right? Which is uh, the sign of, you know, progress. So I I got in quite significantly before the report, which was quite a risk. I think I was like probably 70% in. Um, and so, wow. okay. so after the report came out, or after the Fed, you know, announcement, the market reacted really strongly. Like it was a really quick bounce. 
and um, and I start slowly adding the other more positions, right? And then by by the end of the day, um, you know, I was again mostly invested. So and then we now have two down days, um, you know, Thursday and Friday. Um, but the thing that I realized, and we're going to look at the chart very quickly, even though a lot of so you have to understand, right? This is a stock picker market. So it's not going to be universal, right? So if you think that, oh, just because the index is going up, I'm going to buy any stock and I'm going to make money, it's not going to be true. Um, it's going to be very, um, it's going to be very volatile, some stocks, even if they're, you know, considered good stocks, both fundamental and technical. It's going to be a stock make picker market. It's going to be a trading type of market. Um, and it's going to continue into next year, I believe. Uh, and a lot of analysts say, you know, it's hard to hold us, like buy a stock and hold it, you know. Um, I'm not saying you can, it's just that it's going to be harder. So even with the strong fundamental stocks, because that's this list, it's mostly fundamentally strong stocks. And then, you know, and then you kind of um, buy and sell based on technicals. Uh, even then, all these fundamental good stocks doesn't mean they're all going to move in sync. And that's the, that's the challenge, right? But in general, you can see on, on Wednesday, 77% was moving in, this, in, in the upward trend. Right, or at least show some, you know, some sign of, uh, of of turning, right? So, so it's pretty strong. I don't even remember the last time we see seventy seven percent. See, uh, that's the reason I built built this report is just to see um, how strong of that trend is. And you see, I can go back further. I I, I don't see. It. Okay, so I, I don't know if this one's this is the first day. I'm not sure if that's correct. October thirteen. Yeah. So October thirteen. The, per the percentage. The percentage shows number of stocks uh, moved higher or moved close closed in green on that day. Or it's having it's percentage? having this uh, solid triangle or white triangle signal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so two hundred seventy five okay. stocks. Both. Okay. Mm -hmm. Two hundred seventy five stocks out of three hundred and three are either on a signal. So solid signal, solid triangle signals. Uh, it has make a new high and compared to the previous day. Right, and usually, it, mm -hmm. usually that's considered a turn. Right, uh, again, this is based on three day rule. Okay, um, so meaning it has come down in three days and then turn. Okay, and make a new high. Um, the white triangle means it came down three days, and it has bounced and closed in the upper range. Right, but it didn't make a new high. Right, so. Uh, so which means the next day it could open. Usually, even though it didn't close at a new high, it, it, it may be pretty close to the previous day's high. Is what I'm trying to say, right? So, so what you would do is usually I would set an alert um, for the previous for that day's high, and then in the morning usually it would make a new high if the market continued to make progress. Does that make sense? So, so that's the time, like you know, so. I'm looking at that and see on October 13, that low, that was, you know, the first day of the uptrend, 91% of these stocks here signal a turn. That's very significant. You see that? Mm -hmm. So if we come back to the recently, November 30th, this is the second highest number since then. Uh, and so, so for example, November 9 was the low and November 10. So this is, it's, so, so this is why this is so important because this report because November 9 was the low and November 10 was the day it bounced, right? So you can see 43%. Then the next time it bounced again was 17. So that was the day it made a low and then it bounced. Market data connection reestablished. 70%. Yeah, let me, let me repeat it. We are talking in that three-day chart yeah so yeah that's that stuff is interesting so yeah so like I said we have November 10 the bounce right here and then 17 we have this bounce again 70% of stocks turning right can you share your screen Maybe. oops sorry
Okay. So can you see now? I think it's coming up. Not yet, but. Okay. Yeah. Now. Okay. So yeah. So November seventeen, we have the bottom there, and then that's the same day it bounced. So um, so seventy percent, and then look at the next few days, right? It continue like more and more stocks continue to bounce. So that's a that's a strong mm -hmm. uh, few days uptrend right there, um, and then and then we we have this turn again, and then now, like I said Tuesday, Tuesday, despite the market wasn't performing well, it was it was you know has thirty five percent of stocks turned. That was quite interesting, uh, but sometimes you know you can see this one has a, you know October, November ten. It has one day turn and then it went back down, right? So, so you know, sometimes it can be a false signal. So that's why, like, um, you know, you kind of have to watch out for that. But you know, the reason I was more convinced, like, mm -hmm. uh, here was because we have three bad days, really bad day, especially uh, Monday, right? Um, so it was really bad, you know, like a lot of people, you know, probably got out. Um, and then you know, obviously, we knew Wednesday was a surprise because we didn't expect. You know, so a lot of people talk about what happened Wednesday, and so I'll give you a little bit of my longer term vision. Like I think some some of it has changed. Um, so what happened on Wednesday is very critical, I think. So so a lot of people, like for example, Mohammed or or um or Aaron, I think. His last name, I always forget. Um, he said that uh, um, the market, the Fed, induced what he called undue volatility, meaning he make it sound. And again, it might not be his fault, but the market chose to listen, right? So he gave a remark, which was so both sides of the remark. One side was, "Hey, we're going to start reducing." Uh, you know uh, the the num the height uh, amount right, which is you know instead of seventy five point down to fifty. Okay, so that's the you know the one side of it, and then also the other thing he talked about is like, hey, we don't want to uh, you know have to increase so much and then later reduce that much as well, right? So he doesn't want to like crash the market. So that was the reason why the market, I think, went up a lot that day. Right, is that he finally acknowledged that if he keep raising rates strong, he could induce a big recession in the market, and he doesn't want to do that because, like he said, he doesn't want to have to reduce rates. So you know, in two thousand twenty three, like by a lot, right? Mm -hmm. So that was the reason why I believe the market went up a lot. And so what Mohammed El Aaron said is that the market chose to listen to that, but he also said that you know, just like before. The work is not over. Uh, there could be still more rate hikes, um, and they need to monitor whether the inflation will come down, right? So that's still the 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 you know the other side of the coin, which is still very important. And but the market chose to ignore it, and 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 think part of the reason um, maybe the market thinks CPI number will come down on the thirteen again, which. Which is highly likely, I think, right? Uh, based on all the things that he also mentioned a lot of stuff. Why he thinks, uh, inflation, he believes it's also like that's another thing, right? He acknowledged inflation is starting to come down, and he said a whole bunch of down, a whole bunch of stuff like housing, and shipping costs, and all this stuff that the market already knew about, you know, for for over a month or two. So like for Professor Seagal has been talking about it. Yesterday he was on uh CNBC again talking about how uh. You know, he really believed that the, connection the inflation has turned. Uh, he really believed the inflation has started to go down, and he even he's what he even came out and went as uh, went as far and said, um, next year by the end of next year, it could be down to data connection uh, Like I think he mentioned, the Fed's fund rate could come back down to close to two percent again. I think that's what he said. Is it either the Fed fund rate he said or the inflation rate? Either one of those. I don't know which one. Um, but either way, they're 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 you know, they're kind of similar. Can you hear me? 
the Fed talk about Wednesday. Any any concern or question about that? Uh, <clears throat> so can you can you summarize as well? Uh, so basically, yeah, if you can summarize. Yeah. So market reacted nicely on what you know what i think you know because a lot of analysts don't agree with this so just so you know they don't believe the fed say mm -hmm. anything new okay but the market which i believe why it went up a lot was because they believe that uh the fed finally acknowledged that they can't go overboard with increasing rate hikes. so you know some people want to go like uh, say it might go up to, you know, for example, like Fed Bullard, he won't say he could go up to as much as 7%, things like that. That's kind of crazy talk. But now I think because what of what he, uh, Powell said on Wednesday, I think, you know, he's more along the line that, hey, probably Fed fund rate might be as high as five or even four, five and a quarter, right? Uh, that's kind of like the maximum, right? So I think the market really liked that, right? Like they, they finally acknowledged that that's kind of like the, the 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 top, you know. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because I don't think the Fed has acknowledged a top before. They they always talk about oh we need to keep fighting inflation, right? That's the every single meeting, every time they talk, that's the message. But this is the first time they acknowledge that hey, you know, again they didn't give a number, but they kind of give you know a sense that hey they're they're. They're, um, they're at least for a short term, you know, because they're going to monitor, right? Again, inflation number has to come down. They're going to monitor that. Um, and so Friday's job number was bad, right? Because it was higher than expected, right? So the market didn't like that because, so remember, we have two stories. We have inflation, the, the, the Fed needs to fight inflation, but also in order to fight inflation, uh, by raising rates, that's going to hurt companies and companies uh, and consumers, right? I think um, so. The you know, like I said, the Fed, Fed is um, again. I don't want to say they changed their tune a little bit, but they they they're acknowledging that they could be near the top. And and the reason again, they already mentioned that, which is they they talk about all these numbers, just like what Professor Professor Siegel has been talking about, which is all these numbers are are kind of indicating that the economy is going to slow down and price is going to slow down. And uh, even though the job numbers on Friday, um, so there's also a lot of people on Twitter arguing whether Fed has seen the employment, unemployment numbers on Friday or not. To me, it, you know, I was going into Friday thinking, my expectation is, okay, if job numbers were higher, market will react negative, negatively at first and probably will go higher you know, or, or at least like not close at the lows. And that's exactly what happened on Friday. And the reason why I thought that was because the job numbers are a lagging indicator, right? So it's not a leading in indicator. And that's what Professor Siegel has been talking about. He's like, all these leading indicators, like housing prices and all these other indicators, they're leading indicators. The job numbers are a lagging indicator. So we might not see job losses until like maybe even January or February. Who knows? Like there's a, a time delay, right? Uh, so I don't think the market will react um, too negative, even if it's a bad job, uh, even if it's a really high jobs number. Because the key is companies are already starting to lay off. And so that's going to happen. And it will continue to happen in the next few months. So we all know the job numbers are going to come down. So I don't think that's a big surprise. You know, the, the biggest thing we need to see right now is again, which is the Fed looking for is inflation numbers coming down. That's going to be still your ultimate driver. Now, with that being said, uh, Friday, Eric Johnston, he's from uh, Cantor Fitz, Fitzgerald. He's been pretty accurate this year. Um, you know, calling the the bounds and the you know and the bottom and stuff, and he just came out on Friday and he believed the market is about to change its tune again. So he mentioned that this whole year, just like the Fed, they're focusing on inflation, and they're focusing on how Fed is going to fight inflation. He believes that mm -hmm. 
which is a big, uh, probably the only person so far who make this call. He believes that uh, going forward, uh, so most of the people call this too, but they don't call it so early. But he's calling this like it could happen even this month, which is um, starting you know after the December fourteen meeting. He believes the Fed will start focusing on, well, at least the market will uh, focus on recession, and so. Uh, but a lot of analysts didn't call this. A lot of analysts say the market won't react to the recession issue until next year. But he called. He he came out and called it, and it's very interesting. And he because he mentioned that um, there's a lot of reasons. One one reason is you know very clearly, <laughs> uh, you know the the S and P is hitting this resistance. Right. Technical is this. Um, so he doesn't see much more bounce from here. Um, like I don't know. Like, you know, he could be, like I said, he could be wrong. Um, you know, the market could break out right here. Let me use a bigger pen here. Like, it could break out right here and go to, like, like some people, like, expect around 43, 4,300. Uh, a lot of people actually expect a bounce to 4,300 by year end. Uh, if this rally continues, right? Um, which is roughly around this yeah. level, mm -hmm. the previous high. Um, so, but he, he doesn't see it. He doesn't see there's a much bigger bounce. He thinks 4,100 is kind of going to be the cap. Um, but who knows? We still have two weeks to December 14, right? That's why I'm thinking he might still run a little bit more. I don't know how much more it'll run. Um, but he does see, you know, a big town turn after that. So meaning like it could come as early as December 14 is what he's trying to say. Um, that's an interesting, uh, you know, new theory because will the market, now that the market knows, hey, and the Fed acknowledge it, that's why the market reacts so strongly on Wednesday, right? Um, mm -hmm. that, hey, you know, um, things are, things are different now. And even Fed acknowledge it and numbers are coming down in many areas. Um, so so inflation is decreasing. So that's known. The question is, how bad is this going to hurt the economy now, right? So the Fed hasn't said much about it. The, the, all they said was like, hey, we're going to continue monitoring this, but they're going to keep the Fed's fund rate, uh, you know, pretty close to this current level because the next meeting after December 14, so December 14, they'll raise 50 points. And then the next meeting is February. So it'll be like two months almost, right? before they, 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 they will make another decision. But by then, right. inflation might have come down a lot, but the, also the economy had come down a lot. So that's the big question. And, and, and he thinks, Eric Johnston thinks that uh, it's going to be bad. Uh, and the reason he thinks it will be bad was mainly because of, uh, I saw on Friday's uh, job numbers, uh, the wage growth is much higher. Mm -hmm. I think it was 0.6% growth uh, versus 0.3. I think that's a, I, I'm not sure. Yeah. So that's like much higher. I don't know if that's a year over year or month over month number. Um, but anyhow, it's higher than expected. And he thinks that that's going to cut into margins, right? And then he also talked about how are the issues going to cut into margins too. So he thinks that, um, and, and that's the thing. This last week, you know, all CNBC talked about a lot of time was how, Every analyst are starting to revise their forecast for S and P five hundred earnings for two thousand twenty three, um, and and it's not good, right? Like you know, a lot of them are still very high because they haven't revised it. But there, you know, but comes January, end of January, when the new reports come out, mm -hmm. many companies going to revise it big time. Um, and so the question is, uh, so we know it's going to revise that because things are not, you know, companies are not doing as well, right? So that's why they're cutting. That's why they're cutting jobs right now because they need to improve their margins and so forth. Um, so the question is how much more this has to happen and how, how, by, how big of a problem is this? Um, uh, so, so like uh, I don't have the chart here or the table, but um, when CNBC was talking about it, I think the general consensus is still $231 on S&P 500 earnings next year. 
But if you look at like the big big analysts like J.P. Morgan, Goldman Sachs, those guys, most of them have come down as far as like even two hundred five to two hundred and ten dollars. That's a more than ten percent drop. That's quite significant in earnings for next year. So that's why many analysts agree. Almost every, I I haven't seen one analyst not agree with this. Like every single analyst agree that the first quarter of next year will be bad because of this. Right, earnings are gonna come down a lot, and and no one wants to, like no one wants to buy stocks because you just don't know which company gonna get hurt the most, right? So so that's gonna be the bad time. But but you know that's why I, I said previously I was gonna hold stocks to to end of the year. I still thinking about it, but you know we'll see because what can what Eric Johnson mentioned is kind of fascinating to me because um could that be the peak right and you know the other thing is kind of weird you know we talked about this before is that there seems to be a two month cycle right now uh so from this bottom here is uh June seventeen from this top here August seventeen like exactly two months. And then down here was October 13, again, roughly two months. So again, December 14, which is the fat day, is exactly two months again. So uh, I, I don't know, like this is so weird, right? Like two months, two months, two months. So um, it could happen, that's all I'm saying. And there's like, and, and like I say, I don't know uh, in the next two weeks, how much more, well, roughly seven, seven trading sessions. Right, so five, yeah, roughly seven more trading sessions to the fourteen. So I don't know how much it can go higher in the next seven days, but but for sure we know forty three hundred is a big resistant point. Um, so that that's a big jump even from here to here. So you know we we are sitting at forty seventy one, right? Um, so I don't know. That's that's the I think that's the that's the question, right? You, you know, probably the that's that's kind of where. Um, you know, I don't think I will take much risk when it comes to the 13 and 14, just because, I don't know, it could go either way. No one is ever, you know, <laughs> no one knows the future, right? Um, so, um, my guess is PPI will go down, market will jump, uh, and then after that, it will start to decrease. So just like what Eric Johnson said. Um, you know, because you have to understand, and, and and there's a lot of tweet about this. Dow has already moved up twenty percent from the low. Um, that's very significant. It's the fastest one, the fastest rise in. Uh, I don't I don't know how big compared to before, but it's definitely one of the top. You know, uh, run right. So from that perspective, it's definitely overbought right now. And let me just jump to uh, oscillator right now. Castings. Okay, so you can see S&P at the top. Now, just because it's at the top doesn't mean it will come down right away. Sometimes it will stay at the top for a bit, right? Just like right here, see? So it could stay at the top for, you know, like I say, seven more tra trading sessions, which is highly possible. And you go to Dow Jones. Mm -hmm. Look at this. Dow Jones already at the top for quite a while now, right? So, uh, you know, can it stay another seven days? Can it go past seven days? I don't know. I think as we get closer to the 13, um, you know, I, I feel like that may be the top. So maybe he's right. And he's been right all year, just so you know. <laughs> he's been very tactical. He's been calling like every uh, every turn, you know. Even when he was wrong, he was able to come out uh, and call it again. So like he called the bottom right here. He called the top right here. And then uh, right here he called like he been right all along like so many times this year, um, so incredible. Is he is he on is he on Twitter? Uh, where do you follow him? He's not on Twitter, so he's only on CNBC. Uh, Eric. Yeah, Eric Johnston. Okay, Eric. Eric. Okay. Yeah. Um. So so that's my thoughts. Like after hearing him, um, you know. But you know, I I don't know. Like, cause there's also Professor Seagal. He really believes that the market will. Um, he doesn't think the earnings is as big of an issue, 
um but you know it's hard to say so there's lots but a lot of people like i said not there's not one single analyst mm -hmm. who doesn't agree that you know next quarter will be most likely a, a really bad quarter for the stock market um but mm -hmm. i do want to say you know um you know because remember that that uh cycle the presidential cycle uh where where um uh, it's going up right so that could be uh yeah that that's very interesting too so um so because right it's supposed to go up in, in this cycle which is like from from january to april it's supposed to go up pretty hard um so that's why i don't know who's going to be right or wrong um you know i don't know um but right now the trend is up okay so let me jump back to SM, S P, because that is the most important chart that everyone's looking at um technically and ooh, let me take out the stochastic okay so what happened after we rise above 200 day so we have this big bounce right above 200 day what happened the next two days it tested right it came back down thursday it came back down touch it friday it even went below it but look very close and I text you and I say, hey, mm -hmm. it's very important where it closed on Friday and it closed mm -hmm. above it, right? Mm -hmm. So to me, that is very strong technically. Um, so I, I believe that it will break through this this coming week. That's my, my thinking. That's my expectation, right? It will break through this. Um, then most likely, it will break through that I think if it breaks through this, it's going to be a strong rally, okay? Because everyone is looking at this. You have to understand every single person mm -hmm. out there. So once it breaks through that, like I said, we will get to 4,300 in no time. Like it could take like one or two days. I'm not joking. Because this is such a important technical level. Anytime, you know, market breaks through strong, uh, like a really important technical level, it moves strong. Just no different than right here, right? This big jump right here, seven percent for Nasdaq and four or five percent for S and P. That day, the moment it breaks, you know, of course it's because of fundamental, right? And so, I was, so I was uh, have to come back to last week. I was like, kind of wrong on the timing because I was thinking Friday job report might be weak, and uh, and it could bounce, but instead Fed. Which is even more important. The Fed came out and, and, and you know acknowledged that hey maybe maybe they're near the top, so the market jumped big on Wednesday instead of Friday. But Friday was disappointing because job numbers are still strong. So so now we 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 passed two hundred day. Now we stuck between two hundred day and this long term trend line. So then the question is, how are we gonna break above it? <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. What, what like because this is a technical level so usually for such a strong technical level like you know trend we need something fundamental to break above it um and we're going to look at stocks in a second you know uh we are seeing like say lots of progress in stocks um which is a really good sign um so i don't know like so maybe the stocks you know like Mark Mini Mini said, the, the stocks will always carry the index. So, so let's see if uh, you know money will come in and drive this, or will they sell into into this level? I don't know, right? Just so just because you know we, the market was holding. So you know here's the thing, we cannot make assumptions, right? Just because it's holding two days doesn't mean it won't break down the wet, the third day or fourth day, right? Um, or worse yet. And this could happen. It just stays sideways for the next seven days. It could do that. It will just bounce between this range for the next seven days until the CPI data. Right? Um, mm -hmm. It could it could happen. But stocks may move though. Some stocks can move. So that's kind of so. Th those are the different scenarios that can happen. Uh, yeah. But I feel like. Because yeah, so either way, if it breaks this technical level, I feel like it will be bullish. It will go to forty three hundred. If it doesn't, 
that it might say go sideways until CPI data or unless some big news come out macro wise. Um, you know, or it might slowly drift back down. I don't think, you know, we would see any bigger risk, like say, unless there's some mac something macro, geopolitical or China or something. Uh, I know Monday, the news will be, because next week, I think the news are very light. The only Monday, the big news was, uh, there's some earning news, but um, OPEC is going to make a decision. So that will impact oil. Um, what's expected is that it might even reduce production. That's interesting. No one really knows, but so right now you see it's just holding tight at ten day. Right here, at least the stocks are. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, it's just holding tight, very tight here. It's like trading range, right? This is a uh, what's it a pendant. So if you move back one more. Uh, so Monday is going to be the see how tight it is now. It's pretty much ready to make a big move. So Monday, whichever way it goes, you probably want to follow that. Um, so that's energy. But if we look at the oil price, for a second. So oil price has rebound this week. I said Friday. So that's interesting. Yeah. Despite the COVID news from China, right, and the protests, mm -hmm. despite that, oil price went up. Um, but it's still it's still stuck at the ten day, right? That's the thing. See, look at where it closed. It's still stuck at the ten day. So it's not a good sign. This is still on the downtrend, right? So, um, mm -hmm. yeah. So I don't know. Like I think I think like. Either it will break through on Monday, or it's gonna keep going back down. Another another big drop, right? So that's energy. Um, yeah, I'll let, I'll open it out before I jump to other stuff. Do you have any other questions or concerns you want to talk about? No. Uh, uh, so from the from the event and news perspective, uh, the two big thing we are waiting for is basically CPI report and after that Fed meeting on December 14th. Yeah. Is there anything else? No, I think those are the big two. Um, uh -huh. Let me just quickly jump to the economic news. I don't think there's any in the next week or two. Let me just quickly bring it up. Uh, so I, do, you know, yeah. Give me a second now. I'll come back to that thought here. So this is this week. Next week, PMI, ISM. Yeah, those are weak, right? So this is previous forecast. Yeah, see, it's, it's getting, it's dropping, right? So those are already expected. Um, consumer credit continue to go up. Um, jobless claims. Uh, producer price index. Again, that that might show some. So it's expected to be the same. Uh, consumer sentiment expected to be the same. Okay. So again, those those could move the market a little bit, but uh, I don't know how much it will move. And then a week. Oh, sorry. I think that was it. Yeah. So and then the week after would be the bad meeting. Um. So I want to jump back to what. You know, okay, so most likely, I don't think 14 is a, it will probably be a non event day because the market will expect the Fed to, to uh, raise 50 points. I don't think they'll change. And and so then Wednesday's number, the CPI number, uh, sorry, the day before the Fed announced CPI number, that one is very important in the sense that uh, because the Fed just acknowledged, right, that that things are coming down. It's just the 13th number, the CPI, will, will kind of prove itself, right? So if it if it does come down again, mm -hmm. then I think everyone's on the same page, right? The Fed's on the same page. The market is on the same page. That's why I think, uh, you know, for me, I feel like, you know, if that's the only big event left this year, um, the market will rally at least till that day. Um, 
that's kind of my thoughts. But again, that's the fundamental, right? That's the fundamental side. The technical side, we have this huge barrier on the top channel line on S and P, right? And I don't know what's gonna make it go above it. And usually, when we talk about, you know, this this is right here, right? This trend right here, like for it to break, and we had we had this CPI number, right? That make it break that trend line. So we need. I don't know if this because this is such a big trend line as well. I don't know what what fundamental the data could change that, and I don't know if people will push it higher without fundamental data. But if it does, this is my point. If it does without fundamental data, then 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 for sure we're gonna see forty two hundred because that that that's that's kind of like. If it does push above it, then that means it has enough power to even go there without any fundamental data, right? Yep. So, so that's kind of where we at, right? Um, but I'm 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 I want to be stay calm right now because stocks are working, uh, as well as um, so I'm not like you know panicking or or trying to raise my stops too fast. I'm gonna give it room to run, unless something else happens. Right, I don't know if any news will come up between now and then. Um, if something unexpected happened, like I don't know, if crypto crash again or something like that, um, we'll see. Right, you know, I'm just hoping for nothing to happen. You know, no news is good news right now. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so so let's look at some sectors. Uh, I know IBV has been pointed out. Um, this one breaks out. Very interesting, and then here's another upper, um, higher buy point right here broke out. So, mm -hmm. so that's the, uh, biotech ETF. Uh, Tan, which is the solar solar move along Friday, and it, I don't know if you consider this a breakout. It kind of fit, like, I guess you can consider it a breakout. Um, but it's very choppy here, and then Friday, you know. Uh, it bounced hard. Um, yeah, and then the other sector was uh that we've been following is uh semiconductors, and this one you know again if you draw a trend line it's trying to break out right now but uh it's having problems. If basically follow the Nasdaq, um, which is the weakest right Nasdaq is the weakest right now. Now so we go back to Nasdaq. So we have this breakout from when. So this, the good thing about this was that uh, Wednesday it kind of broke out from this trend line, and now it's just sitting at the ten day. So, so you know, ideally, what will happen is it will just follow this ten day trend line and moves towards this two hundred day. So that that could happen. Again, if we time this exactly like the CPI data, it will give it seven sessions to get there. Um. Let's go back to Dow now. So Dow, Dow is amazing. That's all I can say. Um, this week it tested the ten day, right, and then it it went below it two days in a row. I can't believe it. Even make a new low here, and uh, both days close above it. And then look at look at every time like and so even Friday in the morning look at that bounce of the ten day, right? So now we're sitting comfortably like we've tested the ten day we have tested this trend line right here this previous high, now we're seeing a thirty four four, which is a uh, thousand points from this level. So, so here's the, here's here's what's happening. So if 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 the next seven days are not uneventful. Is not yeah not eventful at all. Then expect the trend can continue. Seven days will bring it up to this high right here. So everything looks good. Everything looks good. The only thing is S and P, right? So will S and P go sideways? Possible. But Dow and uh, Dow and Nasdaq could move. But uh, but that hasn't been the trend. The trend has been um, when Dow leads, uh, sorry, when yeah, when Dow leads, Nasdaq 
black and the S&P in the middle. And when NASDAQ lead, S&P in the middle and Dow lead. So it, it, it would never be, um, so yeah, there might be a high chance that um, um, S&P could even go sideways. I'm not sure, but that'll be interesting. Yeah, but I think a lot of people are really hoping for this to break out, but I don't think, I don't know, it's because so many people are hoping for it. I have a feeling it's just gonna go sideways. What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anything else? I'm sure we'll jump back to this if we have to. But is there anything else you want to talk about on the yeah, index yeah. or the sector? No, I think we're good. We can go back to individual stocks. Okay. So I'm curious on Friday when you text me about end phase. Uh, were you paying attention to it, or did you just uh, follow someone else? No, I was, I, I was paying attention to it. I, okay. yeah, I was hoping about two twenty three breakout. I bought a call as well. And yeah, it turned out good. Nice. Um, so very nice breakout, right? Very nice. Uh, yeah, but if you see the day before, like I, I bought a call then. <laughs> it almost shook me out. It was like 20-30% oh. down in the call. Mm. But next day it was crazy. So I was about to cut it, but I thought, okay, let it give one more day. Mm. Right, right. Um, yeah. Very, yeah. This is a, not an easy stock to hold, you know. And you know, and like I said, once it breaks out, it could have this kind of formation. Uh very quick few days run. I don't know if it'll happen this time. The only the only thing <laughs> here's the name. It could happen. Um but one thing I not uh, I uh, noticed since last night between yesterday and today, I watch on Twitter, every single person talking about this. Mm -hmm. Like I I can like I can I can easily count like hundred uh, you know of tweets are talking about this, and those are the ones that I you know reading right like tweets, and so I don't know how many more people talk about. It. I'm just saying those ones that I'm reading they're all talking about this. So there could be a lot of people focusing on this stock, which is a good thing, because if everyone's gonna buy, like I said, this thing's gonna run like crazy. Um, but at the same time, you know you have to also think counterintuitive, which is like. Does it mean it will work? You know, because everyone's doing it. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know. But forget about tweeting, because you know that's not gonna. You know, you can't you can't predict using Twitter. But uh, but you know, looking at the chart, it looks good right now. Right, volume's there. Look at that. Right, breaks out nice and clean. And you know, this is a clean breakout because it breaks out and it closes at the top. Right, no hesitation. Uh, that's usually a sign of institution buying. Um, not just individual investor buying. So that's a nice clean breakout. Uh, very, very good. So we'll see if it runs. That's that's the goal. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. I think the other stock, uh, you also, I don't know if you still hold it, but Celsius, right? Uh, very close to breakout as well. Mm -hmm. Right? So yeah, I'm out of it, but yeah. Yeah, it bounced after that day. Um, yeah. It's, it's, it's you know oh, right here i think you shake over here right um it's been moving up and then it got another pull back here to 10 day and then now it's it's now you know in the week it is now at the top so it still hasn't broken out like it tries to break out but it kind of it closes at the top so it's a good thing so we'll see next week how this goes but but uh mm -hmm. this one this one tend to write the 10 day so I expect it to continue this 10 day line here. Um, yeah. So, okay. Um, let me jump to my stock list here. So, this week, I didn't know if you pay attention. The biggest stock market winners are the Chinese stocks, uh, which is very interesting. Mm -hmm. Like K Web. Kweb is the internet index there. It just had a superb run. Look at this. I think it gained like 
over 20 percent this week yeah so because monday it opened at 24 31 and it closed at almost 30 right so it's almost a six dollar gain yeah it's almost 25 percent like let's say 24 percent and that's on the index alone and look at this right broke out above 20 day like 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 very clean you know uh like look at this even the day after it was trading so tight and then friday everyone's like okay i'm gonna jump in and so stocks that you haven't heard of in a long time like baba everyone's buying it look at this look at this you know this run right here so this one is still you know lagging the index but but you know it has moved big in the last five days lots of stocks in the internet area um what was the other one? Is it JD? Yeah, JD. Yeah, so this one, so this one is a leading because it bounced above the index. Just uh bounce about the 200 day, just like the index. So it's really weird because it was like, oh, you know, China having all this issue, but yet uh, the high growth tech names are moving. And not only moving, they actually broke out of over the 200 day. So very interesting. Right. Um, other things that's happening. Let me see. If this is the right symbol. Uh, yeah, I can't remember the symbol, but it's a it's a war index. I think. Let me see if I have it in my index list here. The war index is moving really strong. A W W S. Yeah. yeah. See the war index. Look at this. So this is the war index. So mm -hmm. I find this fascinating, and Jim Ropel was talking about this. And look at look at it. Three days now above two hundred a day, right? So so look at this chart. It's so nice, right? It's better than many stocks. <laughs> uh, yeah. And this is the Maybe. war. Yeah. This is war index, excluding U.S. Mm -hmm. So everywhere, like, so the war is actually performing better than U.S. is right now, right? Uh, compared to S&P, because S&P is still 100, 200 a day. So we use S&P as the benchmark, right? So that's very interesting, you know, um, because everyone thinks, hey, so this is what, this is why I'm very confused, right? Because... Like, does this mean the war is doing better than U.S.? Because U.S. is supposed to have a recession coming. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, China and Europe has been in recession for a while now. So, does it mean they're coming out of it? Right? And then U.S. Is going into recession? So, very fascinating things happening right now. Um, when you look at these indexes. So, um, so let look at Mexico. See, Mexico. Look at this is a Mexico index, and it's not even like trying to break above two hundred day because it already broken two hundred day quite a while ago, and it's holding tight. Look at this. It's holding tight. This is this is a cup handle formation. You know, right? If it breaks out, it probably go higher. This is Mexico. Look at Germany. Okay, let's jump to Germany. So these are the ones that Jim Ropel was mentioning. Look at this. Germany. Everyone say Germany is in recession. Look at it. Well, it looks like they're coming out of recession. <laughs> yeah. You know? This is a nice index. So I I the reason why I talk about this is like I, you know, I would never pay attention to all this stuff, but you know, Jim Ropel pointed out this and you know, maybe China, maybe all these countries. Uh, I think Brazil is very strong. It's one of the strongest right now. I don't, I don't know if, I, if that index here is safe. But Brazil is really strong. I think it's the strongest in the world right now. Yeah, I don't have that index. Um, that one has went up a lot. Um, let me see if I can find Brazil. Same thing with India. India is going like it's an all-time high. Okay. Okay, this is pulled down. Yeah, this I don't know the symbol for this. India fund. So then you can find something you can. 
Yeah, company. Yeah, see. So, so all these all these countries are above their two hundred day now, and and not only that, right? It broke above it and just like riding the ten day. That's exactly what you want to see in the uptrend. It's not giving back, you know, moving back below ten day. So not only did they break the long term trend, it ride on the ten day now, because it's an uptrend now. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we go back to S and P. We want to see that, right? So, so you see this ten day right here. This is this is a really big slope. That's a strong slope right now. So we want to see it right this ten day. In this coming week, it can it shouldn't fall below the ten day. Um, because now it rise above two hundred day. So now that's if we want to follow what those country index did. That's what we should see is it. It will write this 10 day now on the uptrend. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. We'll see if that will happen. And again, this come back to the, like I say, as soon as it break above this trend line, like I say, it's going to jump back because everyone follows it. So it wouldn't take long for it to, you know, go from here to 4,300, which is a big move. That's a big move. Um, I don't know if we'll go that far, but that's my. I say if we break above that day, I, we're gonna see a three percent day. I think. Um, but it's still far, right? This is I think forty one hundred to forty three hundred, two hundred points. That's almost eight percent. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite significant. So I don't know if we'll reach that far. We'll see. <laughs> but that's a uh, that's you know. That's if it does break that trend line. Um, so coming back to the stocks, yeah, like so, Futu is a financial Chinese stock. Um, look, look at this trend, riding the ten day, crazy, right? Wow. Um, the other one is PDD. That's a internet stock. So obviously we we already look at the index for. Internet, look at this trend line. Really nice. Breakout, boom. Five days, how many days up now? Three, four, five. Five days up now. Hit 20% gain, like from here to here. So fast in one week. Um, so those are at the top here, right? So here's full two, here's PDD, right? At least those are the ones that follow. I don't have too many Chinese stuff that follow. Um, but those are the, the top, right? Uh, we have SMCI. So SMCI has gotten weaker, which I'm, I'm surprised, right? So look at this. Wednesday, everyone was moving up, mm -hmm. but it, can, it, it did bounce. It just, and the next day, it make a new high. So I bought it, but guess what? It came back down, right? So this is not good. This is not good action. Um, yeah. I'm actually not too happy about that. Uh, WNC, this one, yeah, continues to do well. Transportation equipment manufacturing. So now it bounced like this. So remember, Thursday, Friday, down days, right? Look at this. It's going up, right? So again, Dow stock, very strong, right? Industrials continue to lead. Those are the safe ones. FICO, um, that one, you know, can be volatile sometimes, but I think, uh, let's see. Let's take a second here. I think my internet is slow again. We were talking about FICO. Yeah, so here, here we go. Thursday, Friday, right? So, all, 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 all green days. Very strong stock. Again, riding the 10 day. So at this moment, I would say, like, I would focus on, like, we, we're in the later stage of this rally now. Okay. We, we're getting, I don't want to say we're near the top, but we are getting, like, we six, more than six weeks now into this rally. Every stock should be riding the 10 day now, the stronger ones. Um, and even if they break out, that's fine. But they, they need to be riding their ten day. Anything that goes below their ten day, I would like cut those. Um, so that's kind of you know because we're at the later stage, so there's more. 
more risk now, right? For it to fall hard, you know, all it takes is that one bad day and it will give back uh, 5%, 10% on one day. So, so we need to, we need to pay attention to that. Um, Voice is breaking again. So the next one is TGLS. This one is still, I think it's still, it, it, it pulled back and then now it's bouncing. I believe. See, we have uh, one, two, three, four days bounce. It's really strong bounce so far. And then now it hit the 20, 20% profit. I'm, I'm still seeing the XL. Uh, are you going back to the chart as well? Or? Let me, let me see. A second. Oh, TI. Okay, give me a second. Let me refresh it. Okay. Yeah, thanks for letting me know. Four days bounce, make new high. Now is at twenty percent profit. Um, so yeah, looking good. Right again, building construction. So Pi also uh, disappointed. So I think it's very interesting. Like we know SMH Semiconductor was weak on Friday, which I, I didn't like. Okay? okay, but it followed the Nasdaq trend, right? Um, again, I don't, I don't know. I feel like Nasdaq is definitely a lot weaker, you know, and that's a sign that like worse things is to come. Um, so, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so like some stocks gonna, um, still gonna thrive for now, but I feel like, you know, the market just not ready for the tech stocks. I, I, I just feel like they're the weakest, right? Okay. So yeah, PI. Pinch. Yeah. See, Thursday, Friday, it dropped like, you know, um, Friday close at the top, but again, it didn't, it didn't like, we'll see Monday, it has to, it has to bounce Monday. If it doesn't, it, it's not going to be good. So, um, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, so that's the funny thing. So I don't know why, like we know semiconductor was down as a, as a, you know, group. But some of them were up, right? Like ALGM, I think this was up. Let me see. See? Right? So it, it did drop in the morning like most stocks, but look at look at by the end of the day, it, it closed higher, right? Um, the next one, LSCC. Same thing, right? It, it was down in the bottom, lower in the morning, but then by end of the day, it closed higher than the previous close. So those are acting slightly better. Um, yeah. Let me see. Uh, Rambus. I'm just going to look at all the semiconductors right now. Um, It's slow. Okay, this one didn't close um, higher than the previous day, but it bounced clean, you know, very clean from the 10 day. So that's that's the support. So that's good. Yeah. So that's why I say, right? If it if it if it's, if it if it hold the 10 day, those are the stocks that you probably can hold. Anything that's under 10 day, it's harder to hold. I think. You know what I mean? Yeah, that one's okay. I'm just scrolling down to see if there's any more, any more uh, conductor stuff. That was it. Where's, where, where did GFS go? <laughs> uh, let me see. GFS. Okay, it's down here. The GFS is down here. Cause this one was doing well, but I think it's fault. Yeah, it's it's kind of yeah. See, it's kind of on the downtrend now. I don't know why, right? 
So that's not good. It's falling below the ten day. So that's that's the that's what I'm trying to talk about. I think like at this stage of the rally, you, we have to let go the ones that are under ten day, because they're not working. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I I feel like that's the if if they haven't bounced much late recently, especially after Wednesday, I feel like those ones we can let go. Yeah. So. So those are the weaker ones. But let's come back. Is there any other tech stock you want to look at? Um, um, nothing specific. But, yeah. Uh, specific. yeah, I was checking BA. But, BA is uh, yeah, uh, on the verge of breaking. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's go to BA. Yeah, BA is a huge stock. Um. In terms of weighting, it's my biggest position right now, uh, just because it's a large cap, right? So, um, yeah, so it broke out. Broke out. Mm -hmm. Friday hit a new low though in the morning. Um, so, but, you know, it's okay. Like, you know. Um, yeah, so that was the, <laughs> that was the test there, you know. If you put it depends where you put your stop when when you buy it. If you buy it Wednesday and you put the low stop there, you, you got shaken up. Um but yeah, but this is bullish, right? So this is what we call outside day, right? Mm -hmm. Make a new low but then close at a high high. That's that's a bullish bullish, right? Because it shake out the weak investors and now it's gonna run. So uh so now it break out right here. And this is the the twenty percent profit level. So we'll see how fast this run. We'll see. Uh, but this is a big cap stock. Um, H Aon, industrial stock. Mm -hmm. Let's see this guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, it's funny. They all did the same thing. They all make a a new low on Friday, and then close at the high, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, very interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, HES, that's the next one. So all these are commercial, industrial. So this one, like you know, it didn't undercut Wednesday, but but it, it they undercut Thursday, and then same thing. So they all, all of them did the same thing, make a new low and then break out to new high. Well, that's really a uh, really good sign actually. Um. I don't have HES right now. Uh, let's see. We'll go to solar in a second. I had lots of solar moving up. Okay. So let's see if there's anything. Um, this one is interesting. This one, like, it report good innings. That's why it bounced. But uh, five. Um, it was a strong move. Holy cow! Look at this. Look at this gap up right here. Um, yeah. I don't know what this means because this is a discount store. Mm -hmm. Did really wow. well, but if we look at Dollar Tree, mm -hmm. those ones, wow. I don't know if they bounced for soon. No, yeah, see, all of them going down because they were moving up nicely and then they all break down. Um, another one is uh, Dollar General. Again, th usually these stores they do well in a recession, right? So. Uh, so if recession is coming, yeah. they usually do well. But right now, I don't know. It's yeah. weird. They, like, they did bounce back though on Friday, so that's interesting. It could be because of that that stock, the the five, um, because five below did well on their report. So maybe it's a sign that because these are discount stores. If people are starting to buy more discount stuff, uh, it means a recession is coming. So they could have a run. Is what I'm trying to say going forward. We'll see. Right now, only five is is leading. The other two is not really moving much uh, yet. So we'll see if that change. Like five, I remember five. Let's, let me go back. Yeah, see, right. Um, when they start moving, it moved really strong here at the beginning of of a recession. So I don't know if this is a beginning of the move. It could be. Um. Anyhow. That's that guy. Okay. 
Let's jump to solar because I can. Okay, so oil and gas. Okay, before we look at solar, uh, oil and gas. A lot of them have kind of fallen apart, which I I didn't like. So TRMD, I still have this, but I think, let me see. It's a little bit hard to hold now. I feel. Okay, so it's moving up slowly. Uh, it's almost near new high. Okay, so this one is still okay. Um, I think Monday will will make a difference what OPEC does. So this one is just at the ten day. So, yeah, it's kind of like I said, this this kind of, it's, it's gonna move big or up down one way. I don't know which way. Let's see. Um. Oh yeah, tight water. Tight water. Okay, this one kind of move up. Interesting. This one already moves, you know, move up higher. So, yeah, those are okay. But a lot of um, oil and gas stocks have moved down. These guys are still a few that's holding. Oh, ACDC. Let me see. Okay, so this one is kind of below 10 day now. Uh, yeah, not good. Okay, so let's jump to solar. Run. Um, Kramer was talking about run on Friday. I, I didn't really listen to it, but uh, I can't remember. Wow. Yeah, so Friday was a strong day. I didn't like this action. Look, it didn't, it didn't close higher. <laughs> Right, so it's it's <laughs> weird. I don't know why. Um, it should go higher, but it didn't. Oh, where did my my miss go? Uh, sun power. Let's look at sun power. Okay, see this one move higher, so that's good. So it break out this trading range right here. So, so that's good. So that's what I'm looking for. Uh, M phase. So we know M phase. We saw it earlier. Breakout. So that's good one. Right? So it's catching up. So M phase catching up now. See? Um, array. Let me see array. Okay, yeah, it makes a power like it was pulling back pretty strong here, and then now it make a pretty mm -hmm. like that was a big move right there. So, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. yeah, is, it, is there any other ones? I think mm -hmm. that's it on my list. Okay, so good. End phase there. Um, but like I say it's number twenty one now. It's four. Mm -hmm. Is four? Is that four? F O U R? Oh, four. Okay, four. Yeah, four is interesting, right? Let's, let's, let me see where it is. Okay, so it looks like it dropped quite a bit. Um, let me go back. Now it's coming back. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, so now it's now starting it's to bounce back. back. Yeah. Yeah, this stocks is uh very volatile. <laughs> um. But yeah, it's it's coming back now. Yeah. This is like what kind of like, you know, what I've been talking about. So when a rally start, first week, second week, a lot of stocks are still moving on the right side of the base. By the third and fourth week of the rally, they should have broken out. Or or at least broken out within um uh from a trend line, you know. So for example, if they if they're going like you know like 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 the, the first two weeks will be going up, and then by the third or fourth week they should be breaking out, either from an early entry trend line or like a higher uh cup and handle base or something, right? Um. So after the fourth week, like a month. I'm not saying stocks doesn't break out of the month, but the leaders, right, the ones that are the strongest, they're good. They're gonna, you know, they 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 don't wait because institution won those stocks. They're not gonna wait. 
And so those by the after four weeks, they should already broken out. They should already be riding their ten day, right? So we are six weeks in now. Like they should be riding their ten day now. So you know, this stock broke out but failed, right? Like that's the unfortunate part, you know. But it looks like building a very long sideways base right now. At some point, it's gonna work, you know. Or at some point, it's gonna fail and fail gonna fail hard. So I don't know which way it's gonna go, you know. <laughs> Um, but it's not good. Like I don't like the action of this stock because every other stock, the leaders are are making new highs, but this one is like still fighting within this base, right? Um, but yeah, you know, there, sometimes in a bull market that, that is different. Like in bull market, some stocks will break out even in the third or fourth month. Uh, but we're not in a bull market, right? So. Um, not yet anyway. So, so I wouldn't like focus on stocks like that. You know what I'm saying? I think I tried it once and I, 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 I had to cut my loss, but you know, um, yeah. So, but I, I know it has strong fundamentals, but unfortunately, the, that's the thing. There's lots of stocks that have strong fundamentals. But they're not moving, which is weird. I, I think I saw one yeah the day before. I can't remember which one now. I was like, why is this stock not moving, right? I, I don't know. Maybe it's four. I don't know. Let me see. I know it's at the top of the fundamental. Let me go look at it. Go. Go to the top here. No. Oh, yeah. Four, four right here. And the number 13, the strongest one. Look at this. 400%. Right, 400% uh, earnings projection next quarter. Yeah. Uh, okay. I, I oh I haven't talked about shows. Shows is the energy solar too. So this one, this one was weird. Look at this one. See, I don't I, like it's weird. Like this one broke down. I I owned this before, but you know I had to cut. Um. Yeah, I don't know what happened. <laughs> I don't know if there's news or what. I don't know. It's just it's just falling apart now, which is weird. It was near the top for me, and then now it's like, yeah. Anyhow, so again, this this market is so tricky, right? It's like even if you get find the find the right uh group, it's not all of them go up. So that's why like so. Sh Look at shows now. It's 112 now. It dropped to 112. So it was in the top 20 a week ago. So uh, again, it fought when that's the problem. This market, like, it's 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 no different than like if you look at the index, right? And and they were talking about this on IBD too. If we go back to um, uh, let's look at Dow just because it's easier to read. Uh, Nasdaq probably uh. Yeah, so the problem is the problem with the market right now is when it. Okay, let me just go back to my uh, temporary line here. So on Wednesday, right? If you didn't buy um, in the morning and you buy after the Fed announcement, you are buying at a high price. And then Thursday and Friday, at least at the Nasdaq side. It probably shaking most people out, and that's constantly happening, right? And every time, you know, same thing with this, like you know, the 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 CPI report right here. If you didn't buy before the CPI report and you buy after CPI report, you get shaken out. At least on the Nasdaq, maybe I should look at Nasdaq. Um, so it's very very hard to make money in this market, even if you get the trend right. Because you're always buying later, and you always like, you know. Um, so I I feel I feel like I said this six week rally, even though it sounds like a long time, but most people hasn't make much money. You know, everyone's still in the single digit, right? Um, yeah, it's really difficult. So, uh, yeah, look at Nasdaq. It's like, I don't know, man. This just doesn't look good. Like I don't, I don't know what else I can say about this. It just, the chart just looked terrible. You know. 
it's been like sure it's near the top here but I don't know that's why I, I hate looking at NASDAQ because every time I look at NASDAQ chart it makes me uh, feel pessimistic <laughs> yeah <laughs> But, you know, that's why there's not many tech stocks, right? The top 50 here. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, let's jump to um, let's jump to health for a second. So, we saw IBB, which is a health index, um, biotech, is, is, is breaking out, right? So, this, this could be, you know, good. I don't know. We'll see. But Halo. Halo. Look at Halo. Wow, look at this. Look at this trend. Riding the 10 day. This is what you want. Stocks that ride the 10 day right now. Right? That's good. Uh, let me see what else here. Gill. So this is a big cap gill. This is gill. Look at this. Wow. Continue to ride 10 day. Look at that. Right? So, um, let me see what else there is. And there's a lot of biotech stock. Like biotech is the biggest group in the whole market. Like over a thousand stocks in that group. And I only follow like some. So there's a lot more. Uh, what I'm trying to say is there's a lot more stocks out there that you can buy that's not on this list that's doing well too. It's just some of this. Um, yeah, I haven't added too much to it, but. There's lots of stocks in this group. Uh, this is a Met P. Okay, this one doesn't look as good. It's kind of so. This this is what I'm saying. There's stocks that are riding ten day, and then there's stocks that are slowly giving up the ten day. Like right, see that? No, this one is not so good. Um. Yeah. So there's A net here. We didn't talk about A net. Let's jump back to this guy. A net. So I know a lot of people are looking at this. I think some people mm -hmm. are shaking out here. Right here. But uh yeah, see Friday's action not good. Right? Again, any stock that's at 10 day right now, mm -hmm. if it's not bouncing off the 10 day, I think those ones are the weak ones. They should be bouncing off their 10 day. You know? Mm -hmm. So this one, like, it broke below it and then recovered the 10 day. Like, it's not strong enough. Like I feel like that's not strong enough. You know, you want those ones that bounce off the tendon and move up, back up. Those are better, better to hold than this ones. Because um, we're at late stage now. We might have another, like say, seven days of rally. Or, you know, let's say the most bullish, it goes all the way to your end. But I think some of these stocks are going to fall apart. Um, on to... Let's see this one. Yeah, see this one? It's having like they like they're having a tough time bouncing off the ten day. They keep coming back to it, right? And then this is after a downtrend too, so it's not good. Yeah. Um let's focus on the top ones. Titan, Titan did well because it report good earnings, I think. Um, yeah, there you go. But I missed this break. I missed this stock. Uh, let's kind of give back a little bit. Anyhow, uh, let me see if there's any name. Yeah, CPRX. So this is not a biotech stock. Let's see. Yeah, it's really good. I love you too. What's up? Yeah. Yeah. Is, um, it's okay it's like a little bit volatile it has this one weird day try to break out and fall back but right now it's, it's climbing the 10 day so it's okay maybe um yeah it might be okay um Containers. Oh, this one's a new name. M Y E. At least for me, it's a new name. Um, let's see. So this is industrial. Look at this. Riding ten day. That's perfect. Yeah. P 
Yeah, you see, this one is also new name, Mana. Um, wholesale food. That's interesting. Like wholesale food usually like doesn't. Um. Also, this is kind of like a recession stock. So. Yeah. That's interesting. Wingstop. So this is um. A restaurant stock. It's okay. Start it's starting to to hold, you know, stay above ten days. So this is this is what exactly you want to see. Bounce off ten day and you know it's not too close to ten day, close at the top. So you know that's good. Uh FN Baronet Industrial. Look at this. Writing the ten day. So this is good. Yeah. Um I don't own Lulu but I think they'll be reporting soon. So they're doing well too. Yeah, December eight, five days. They they report this week. So look at this. Holding the ten day. Very nice. Um yeah. Very interesting. I, I'm I'm a little bit surprised Lulu is doing well because you know people are tight on pocket. They must yeah, be doing. Yeah, they are in the high high market. <laughs> yeah, I'm very surprised. You know, but this is the nice big breakout right here. Uh, so. Yeah. Let's jump yeah, to Apple for a second because uh, I'm just curious market. what Apple is doing because that's a high end consumer stuff. Okay, so I, Apple obviously has its own problem, right? Supply issue right now in China. Um, yeah, look look at this. This is a, a a pretty bad downtrend. So, yeah, it's not it's not super bad. It's just it's just uh right now at this moment it's just on the downtrend. Okay, Tesla came back a little bit, above 10 day, 21 day. Yeah, it bounced back quite a bit, so that's good. Um, so let's see the downtrend or not. Okay, so somewhere around there. It's still a pretty, still a pretty. Uh, see this action right here? When it crossed the trend line, it should, you know, like close off it like further but it's not right so i don't know yeah. that's not that's not a good technical action um anything else amazon yeah see this is just following the 10 and 21 yeah. day line not good this is not good at all this is not good uh google Okay, Google is, is now bounced off the 10, 50 day. This is good action. This is really good action. Microsoft. Same thing. Look at this. You should, you should see a clean bounce off the moving average. Those are the stocks that probably can can go further higher. You know? Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's pretty much it, man. Like, uh... Mm -hmm. I think overall, like I said, we we're very close to a critical point. I think, and I, I really don't know what will happen the next seven days. Um, but everyone's saying right, like <laughs> the rally continues right until something breaks. So, um, so that's that's the best way to look at it. Um, okay, let me let me just look at my notes here, just in case I have something I didn't talk about. Um. Mm -hmm. Give me a sec here. I have it on the other screen. Okay, so I'll just read it out. So, so this is a stock picker market. Uh, Monday we have China COVID protests. Um, and then we have the PC number came out, which was better, which was um going lower. So, which is good thing in general. Uh, let me see what else they talk about here. 
um, I don't remember who said this, but they say, hey, look for early entries, don't wait for conventional buy point. Um, breakout over trend lines are the best way to get early entry. Um, okay, let me look at one thing here. Let me see. I think the trend has broken in this one. Let's go back to S&P. Yeah, so this, okay, so let me just uh, take out all the markups for a second. Uh, just because it's easier to read. So here, here's one, like what happened was we had this trading range for a couple of weeks. Okay. And S&P broke out of that trading range on Wednesday. You see that? And, mm -hmm. yeah, and, yeah. and, and now, you know, 4,000 is no longer a ceiling. Right. So now we are in this new, uh, higher higher level now. So that's why this is a really <laughs> yeah, good yeah. Uh, sign, <laughs> right? So what this is telling me, like you know, again, you look at the ten day moving average. This is the slope now. It's moving in that direction. So. So this is uh, something I think very important this week that has happened. It's not only did we claim the 200 day, mm -hmm. we broke out of this trading range, the 10 day is sloping upward, the 21 day is sloping upward, and 50 day, it's hard to tell, but it is starting to slope outward, okay? So those are all bullish signs. Um, the other thing that I haven't talked about before is when the index is more than 10 days above the 21 day line some people call this the power trend so you can see it came very close to it but it never really hit the below the 21 day anytime you have 10 days or more above the 21 day on an index they mm -hmm. call that a power trend so so this was the test right here right it's exactly near the 10 day i think like 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, 12, 13, 13 day. It test this and it, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then it, it it didn't fail. And then after that, we have this powerful day. So now we are on what we call a power trend. So which means it's easier to go up, right? Because the power trend usually mm -hmm. means it already been tested. Does that make sense? Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's jump to Dow again. I'm just looking at my notes here. Some of this critical stuff that happened this week. Um, I we briefly talk about this, which is like, right? We test this August high mm -hmm. yep, yep. one time here, and then two times here. So we have test this, you know, one, two, three, four days in the four days in the seven day session four days and each time mm -hmm. except for this initial pullback it closed above that line okay so this means again the trend should, should continue okay just because it already been tested so many times does that make sense okay yeah 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 mm -hmm. let's look at this one iwm russell i can probably put russell here So we put Russell. Okay. So here you go. So this this you know this is this is critical for Russell because it it fell two hundred day, just like S and P right fell two hundred day, fell two hundred day right here. Okay, what happened this time? It went above two hundred day. Instead, it found support right there. <laughs> Again. This should signal trend continue higher. So those are um, so those are the important highlights on the index that happened this week. So I think, let's like I say, I, 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 you know, I think like we, mm -hmm. you know, we'll mm -hmm. see how this market can move higher. Everything is saying market will move higher. So uh, at least in the short term. So we come back to S and P. We have this long term trend line. This is what everyone's watching right now. Okay. Let me go to my uh, 
outlook here because I think I had some uh, uh, oh we'll watch this at, at the end but uh, okay, now this candle chart okay let me open this this is this is a nice I don't have candle charts but someone has it so I'm just going to pull it up um, Okay, let's blow it up for a second. Here you go. This is exactly what happened um, this week. I think he missing the two days after, but it didn't matter. Uh, this is every time it came across the top channel line. It has this candlestick where. You know, it just it's barely, it barely naked and then came back down, right? So, so you know, all I'm saying is be open mind. As much as we think the market should go higher, and that's what most people anticipate right now, it's possible it come down, right? Uh, despite what happened this week, like this week is a productive week, like when you look at the chart, but. Again, this is the one caveat that is still left. If we can't break through it, we're gonna go down. So I don't know how it's gonna break down, but like, you know, um, again, I don't know if it goes sideways or slightly drift down a little bit. I don't know what's gonna happen, but we have to be open-minded that that it might not move much from here. It's it's possible. So, um, I don't know. I give it like 25, 30% chance of this breaking down. But, you know, there's a 60, 70% it can continue. Well, let me see what else I have here. Uh, we already talked about Eric Johnston, uh, Professor Seagal. Yeah. Like, I'll, I'll put it in the chat, but like, oh, this is Aaron talking about this. Uh, yeah, I'll put it in the in the chat for you if you want to listen to it. Sure. Um, yeah, 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 definitely. Because uh, I feel like I'm going to listen to it again. Because I think, um, yeah, they said really good stuff. Uh, Eric Johnston. Oh, yeah, Eric Johnston. You, you haven't seen. You don't have. You can follow this from, from this video. This is only a, a partial of the interview. Mm -hmm. But it's still good to uh, listen. Um, I don't have Professor yeah, yeah, yeah. Seagull's yeah, link. But I feel like, again, I want to listen to him again. Because he's very bullish right now. Um, so, yeah, I think that's it. Um, yeah, so let's summarize, you know, where we at. Uh, I can, um, yeah, I don't have my portfolio uh, open in here because I don't have my phone right now, but, but I can, I can talk about it because I have it open on my other computer. Um, so the way to position this week, I haven't raised my, my stops higher. Um, I'm just positioning them. As a stop, meaning like uh, I split the, the like as as it moves higher, I just kind of split the position. Um, but I haven't moved like the lower ones to the higher, right? But in, you know, we'll see. I think Monday is critical. Not because it's Monday, it's because like generally how the market open each week can be uh, can be important, especially in a non non uh, non uh, news week, right? Uh, economic news week but but the one thing that will be o important monday is the is the opac so um yeah okay let's quickly jump to that like let's look at uup because i think that's very important to you the, the um the u.s dollar so let's see so the u.s dollar had come back down a little bit not a lot oh there you go actually Okay, so the dollar index, this is the dollar index, right? So not, not just against Canadian, obviously, it's against all a basket, right? So this one has come down to 200. So that's that's what I was thinking before. Um, but against Canada, it hasn't made new low yet. But against the world, it has. That's interesting. So we are at the 200 day. Um, I don't know if we'll go lower. Because the oil price 
and the you and the and the and the oil price they usually are in sync but right now they're not in sync um well so like us dollar goes up i guess oil was strong mm -hmm. so now it's going down and and oil like, like i said oil has gone up a few days in a row right so slightly not in sync which is interesting so we'll see um so th that to me means the the us dollar will drop lower because because the oil price is moving the other direction right which is weird like normally it should fall but at least this year that's what happened but it hasn't in the last week so i don't know what that means on monday uh anyhow i don't own many oil stocks anymore so so it's not big it won't affect me too much but it will affect mm -hmm. the us dollar i think um depend on what OPEC does um let me see what else um so that's the us dollar but okay coming back to how to position for next week um i'm just looking at my portfolio here some of them have moved quite a bit like full two tgls pdd those are all about 10 almost 10 percent for me uh lgm td even even tdw type water it's up seven percent so um and most of the stocks in my portfolio like two thirds more than two thirds are green right now so um yeah i like i said i haven't raised my stop uh completely but you know we'll see how monday react if monday react poorly i will i might move my stops uh just because of this 200 day line thing like i said we, we are a critical point right so any sign of weakness i don't want to take too much risk like this is not the time to take risk right now do you, do you know what i'm saying yeah because yeah. Yeah, we, we're at the top here right so if we don't pass this line so i'll be watching this line very closely this coming week but if we don't pass this line like the, the, then there's really no reason to take more risk at all um because it's gonna go that other way so i hope that doesn't happen because yeah. that'll be a bad december <laughs> so uh, I really hope that doesn't happen. <laughs> you know, it's been a bad year already, right? So, <laughs> so if we close yeah. December week, oh my god! I mean, it could happen. Just so you know, it could happen. But you know, you never know, right? So, but but like, that's what I'm saying. We 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 are six weeks into this rally. I'm hoping for another seven days. But th if that doesn't happen, like I say, we have to be very mindful that you know this 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 mm -hmm. this um ceiling. <laughs> So yeah. when I was on IB Live this week, it's funny how some people say, "Oh, this is so obvious, right? It's gonna go lower," and then some people say, "Because this is so obvious, it's not gonna go lower." So it's like it's like fifty-fifty chance, really. <laughs> so yeah, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, if you follow the previous trends, that's what happened. It's just gonna go lower. But again, it's also there's also counter to intuition, which is maybe this time it's the third time um, it won't go lower, right? So, but I'm just saying out loud, like after what Eric Johnson, because he's right all year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. After, like, I have to take his word into account because he's been mm -hmm. right all year, right? And so, watch out interview, even though it's really short, but um, uh, you know, um. If you have CNBC on TV, then you can watch the whole, I think, probably it's slightly longer interview. But at least that four minutes will give you what, what, why he thinks it's going to go lower. Like, he didn't say exactly when. He, he's more targeted, like, after the 14, it's going to go lower. Which is different than what everyone else is saying, right? Everyone else is saying that we will end the year strong. So, but be open mind. So, so right now, like I say, I feel like it's it's kind of it can go either way really easily, and so which the next big move is the big is the big one. So I like especially if there's like no news, because that means that the institution if it goes down, let's say uh, hard on two percent in the morning or something, that's a sign that institutions want to get out right even without news or um. If it goes up two percent, 
uh, early in the morning or something. It's unlikely, but let's just say it does. Um, then again, that's a sign that um, they want to ride this rally. So I go with the flow, you know. Um, so and and like I say, if I see sense anything unusual, especially on the downside, I would I would start to raise my move my stops. Um, and you know. I, I really don't know. Like I think that's the fifty fifty that's why I say it's fifty fifty. It's like you know, um but I feel like, you know, if I come back to, you know, um I, let me Yeah. Cause we are so we have this just one last thought here. Cause because this day is so strong, like if again, remember I talk about when you have this like update, like really long stick long candle mm -hmm. and and then you have like a small drops those are the stocks you want to look at and it's no different than the index those are the ones that usually means it'll go higher you know this is like this is like the power power move right like if it goes up lots and then drop a little bit like it gives up like you know maybe one third not even right that's that's how you know from the technical perspective that's how you know the they want to go higher so so that's why you know um mm -hmm. you don't want to if you move your th that's the problem if you move your stop mm -hmm. let's say to uh even friday's low right let's say you own a stock and you move it to friday's low and it monday it might drop low start mm -hmm. weak and then boom bounce again you know and and then it could even bounce stronger like that, that that's what happens you know and and then you will you will uh, get shaken out, you know, a lot of your position. So when when at this moment, because I'm more optimistic technically, mm -hmm. I might put like let's say ten or twenty percent at that low, just so that hey, if I get shaken out, I only get shaken out ten twenty percent. I still have seventy eighty percent. So from a positioning perspective, that's what you can do, right? Or or you know. But if you do half half, then you lost fifty. You know, let's say you put Wednesday is low here, and then Friday is low fifty fifty. Then if you get shaken on Friday is low, then you only have fifty percent left. So that's kind of like how you can adjust your your weighting on the position side, on where the risk levels are, right? <laughs> um, so that's something I take into account more on on like two things. One, what my expectations are. So right now I expect it to move higher um should be very easy so if monday morning it doesn't bounce even if it goes down in the morning it's fine but if it doesn't bounce like within an hour or two then i know something is wrong right that's just like last monday right just like last monday in the morning it opens <laughs> weak and it, and then right away i see some of my stops getting hit um then you definitely need to move your stops right away or even sell it you know um but of course, in this scenario, it bounced back. But if imagine it didn't, right? Let's say Wednesday continue lower, right? So, so that's what you know. You don't know that. That's the thing. So, okay. Anything? Any other question? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, no. Really good conversation. Did you? Uh, but, go ahead. But we are at a really important juncture here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, like I say, the story fundamentals everything is supporting it to go higher right now but technical on s p alone is what's the biggest problem this is like i swear in twitter this is like 90 percent of people uh, fall on really this line. good conversation 90 percent of people are falling this right now so we are at a really important juncture it's either gonna move it's gonna move big man if it goes up it's gonna move big like it'll be so fast like you know what will happen all the automated trigger will happen right everyone's setting their buy zone around this level 41 i think it's 41 um 20 or something yeah somewhere around there it's roughly 41 20 that's what uh mark newton from fun uh was saying 41 around 41 something so last week it, it hit a high of 4100 exactly i think see high 4100 mm -hmm. exactly yeah and then what happened the sell sell traders came in. That's what happened. 
But same thing, right? When it goes, I don't know what people will say that, but most people say around forty-one twenty. Some people even say forty-one, you know, fifty. But but that's the trigger line. If it goes above those two level, like depending, you know, it's gonna be big. Lots of triggers will happen on the buy side, right? So that's all those automated triggers will happen. Yeah. So that's why when it moves, it's gonna move fast. So uh, watch out for that if that happens. Um, it might not happen. You know, uh, but if it does happen, it will move fast. So that's kind of like you know. Now, if it let's say it goes up, right? Because right now, um, you know, it depends on where you buy. You know, I got lucky because I bought most of my mm -hmm. below before Wednesday's rise. But for most people, they're they're not making much money right now, right? If you buy after Wednesday, so so if it goes up again and it breaks that, it's going to be big. You're gonna be up like easily five percent on your portfolio. Um, for me, I'll be probably more more closer to ten, 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 or a little bit more, ten, eleven percent. So at that time, that's you know, I wouldn't sell. I even at that time, I don't think um I would sell it. Like even if there's strength, because that's this is the key, man. The moment it breaks this, I expect it to go higher. You know what I'm saying? Right, I wouldn't, I wouldn't sell because that's that's the technical thing, right? Now, yeah, that's that's what I want to say. Is I I wouldn't sell at that moment. I'll I'll probably like let's say I'll probably hold until the CPI day mm -hmm. if that happens. Um, but I will move my stop to that level. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'll move my stops up so at least, you know, I won't lose money anymore, right? So um, so even if we come back down hard, for example whatever reason uh i won't lose money but um but i'm gonna let it ride if it breaks through this because here's the thing there's so many theories where it could go there's you there's so many people think this is a recession coming right you really have to understand that so yeah. many people yeah they say this is probably again some analysts call this this is the most anticipated recession ever in history Now, with that being said, yeah, <laughs> with that being said, is it gonna happen? Like, <laughs> like what's like so many people anticipate? Even the consumers are anticipating this. Like, actually, yeah, I wanted to talk to you about that because yeah. like, everyone is talking about it. Usually, it's there is no surprise factor to it. Exactly. So. The, no, okay, so why why I point this out? I think yeah, that's <laughs> um. This that you said the word surprise, the surprise element, which the only one I feel like is uh, very few people are very super, like I said, Professor Siegel, Actually, he's yeah, probably the only one who's super bullish. I mean, there's a, probably a, a, a couple more guys, but I feel like Professor Siegel has really changed his tone like big time in the last, especially on Friday. He he went from like, you know. As long as the Fed do the right thing, the market is gonna be okay. To now, he feel like after what happened on Wednesday, he feel like the market is gonna be bullish going going forward. So, um, and and he like I said, even the 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 sentence he said like the um, the 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 inflation will come back down to the two handle. That's crazy talk. No one said that right now. By the end of two thousand twenty three, if it does come back down to the two handle, market will roar. Like if that's the anticipation. Yeah. Right? That's what he's saying right now. And again, he's one of the few people that's right since the beginning, since 2021. So um so I wouldn't discount what he said. Like I think he he could be right too. So, you know, the bull market may be in front of us, you know, that um that no one even anticipated. That's why coming back to that presidential uh election cycle. It's generally the the best cycle in the whole four year term is the next four months, just so you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like November to April is the best six months time in history, in this time of presidential election cycle. So, again, I don't I don't want to say you know that's going to happen again, but based on history, based on over hundred twenty years of history, that's what uh that's what happened. So, um. Yeah, I, I don't know if I've saved that chart, but that that's a good chart. So anyhow, I just want to bring that up again. That 
anything is possible, man. No one knows the future. That's why ride the trend. Uh, you know, eventually, if it like I said, the other thing I showed you was that report. If we see, you know, all these stocks start to fall apart, um, we will know. We will know. So, uh, or or maybe to continue um, moving even faster. Right now, it's the slowest pace you could probably think of. Like even though these stocks are like some of these are moving fast, but in general, most stocks are are not moving fast. You know, um, this is very slow pace for for leading stocks. You know, moving ten twenty percent in like six weeks is is considered slow for like this type of stock. You know. Usually they move like more like you know like this, mm -hmm. thirty to fifty percent in like six weeks, right? That's considered normal for for a bull market run, but be, because we're not in a bull market, right? So, um, yeah, I'm sure we'll talk about this again next week. We'll see. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I I saw that chart. Uh, Mark Manuverni posted a video this week. On Twitter, that's where that chart is there too. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. You don't you mean the presidential one? The presidential camp? Yeah, presidential. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah presidential though. Yeah. yeah. Right after uh midterms, that's the best time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So so that's you know, and, and, and it has been, right? So that's the thing. It has been. Um yeah, you maybe, know, maybe. so yeah, I, I saw that it has been uh, exactly you know, right so far. Week. You know, on Twitter, that's and, where that and, uh, is so that's why, you know. But but the problem, like I yeah, say, the biggest same. problem yeah, is so Dow is acting strong. But so again, the biggest your, problem is Nasdaq uh, right now. It's, it's, this is yeah, really concerning. I really feel like this is concerning. You know, even if we move up to twelve thousand, like this is going to be the last one standing. Like like I say, S and P might even pass it. And then the next seven days, it will pass it. And then Nasdaq will barely come up to this 200 day. Again, it's playing catch up. Every single day is playing catch up. Um, it's not a good thing, right? It just shows. Like recently, like all these stocks that report is, is concerning, like Salesforce, right? Um, they're not doing well. Um, there's a few other stocks too. I can't remember now. Look at, look at Salesforce. This is This is concerning, right? The forecast is going lower. Mm -hmm. uh, what was the other one? I think there was a few. Service now? Service now or now? Yeah, that one. Yeah, there's a few names that report like Thursday and Friday that's considered. This one is okay. It's okay. It's above 50 day. Oh, um, even, uh, even CrowdStrike. CRW. Oh, yeah, yeah. That one got hit hard this week. Yeah, 20% yeah. down. So. Yeah, that is one. Yeah, really, really low now. So, um, you know, so this, now, this is concerning. So this, is, all this, all this, you know, all these stocks are on the downtrend, and and these are the best of the best <laughs> in in terms of big cap tech, right? So yeah, this is the fastest company who reached a two billion ARR, fastest yeah. like less than ten years from yeah, the day down. from since inception. Yeah. So tech is in the back place right now. That's all I can say. That is one. And I don't think it's over. Like that's why, you know, as much as I want to believe a bull market is around the corner, this is not telling me a bull market is around the corner, man. Right? That's why I look at Nasdaq, I always feel pessimistic. Um, this is the fastest so, company who reached a two yeah, billion ARR. It's unfortunate. Fastest. Like and and now, if we go into recession, from since inception, you know, tax is probably where most people will cut, most companies will cut, right? So in terms of spending, because that's the easiest way to cut. Yeah, you know, and yeah, so it's not look, it's not good. It's not good for sure. So that's it, man. <laughs>